My entitled parents try to force me to give up my inheritance just so they could have the money to take care of a child they clearly could not afford. And I honestly could not be more upset. Here's what happened. I am a 19-year-old female and I'm my parents' second child. I have three brothers and one other sister. We grew up very poor and our parents were often dependent on financial help from relatives and friends just so they could raise us. This is because even though my dad has a mediocre job and my mom doesn't work, they just kept on popping out one kid after another. My parents are very religious and believe that children are a gift from God. I think personally that's just a bunch of BS. My parents' choices to have more kids wouldn't bother me if it hadn't actively caused mine as well as my siblings' lives to turn to absolute garbage. While growing up, we never had new clothes or toys. We had to accept handouts from family members who were much better off than we were. We never went out or did anything fun. And to top it all off, we were well aware that the rest of the family looked down on us for constantly asking for handouts. Now, my older brother and I have managed to get into good colleges and are looking forward to a future that would be better than our parents' lives. He and I were staying at our parents' place for a while due to the COVID-19 lockdown. One morning, my parents called all five of us into the living room. And that's when my mom announces that she has great news. The smile that was forming on my face died pretty quickly when she said, we're pregnant again. At this point, I lost my temper. I asked them how they could be so stupid and irresponsible. Do they not have enough financial troubles already that they need to bring in another mouth to feed? My older brother tried to calm me down, but I was livid. After a lifetime of scarcity because of my parents' stupidity, they still had not learned their lesson. I asked them how they planned to provide for this kid, and what my dad said next totally blew my mind. My dad told me that I would have to give up the money that our great uncle had left me. For the record, my uncle had left all five of us some money, which we only had access to when we turned 18. When he said that, I said, no, absolutely not. That money's going to help me pay for my college expenses. And when I told him that I would not do that, he called me selfish for not being there for the family. I then told them straight up that if they couldn't provide for that kid, then they should not have tried to have one in the first place. My mom then started crying and called me a heartless monster. My dad told me he was disgusted with me but I told them there was no way I was going to pay for their stupidity and that I would only be using this money for my college education. But to be honest, I was really worried about my siblings' lives getting even worse. While my older brother and I have finally escaped our parents' clutches, the others, especially my younger sister, will be expected to help take care of this baby. No teenager deserves to have their adolescence ruined by dealing with diapers and having to take care of a screaming baby. I know what that's like because I had to go through that as well. It was expected of me to be an unpaid nanny to my younger brothers and sisters. My older brother could go out with his friends and have fun, but I had to stay home and help give baths and feed the toddlers. At this point, I got other family members involved to try and understand where I'm coming from, so I decided to call my mom's maternal cousin. She's one of my favorite people in the world, and when I told her that my mom and dad were expecting another kid, she could not believe what she was hearing. I told her everything and explained how they expected expected me to hand over my inheritance and she was absolutely appalled. She said she was going to speak to my parents and told me not to sign over anything. I promised her I wouldn't and of course I wasn't going to. Things escalated from there but to be honest I've now decided to cut contact with my parents. I just can't watch my family slide further and further into this garbage pit. I'll be maintaining contact with my sister just to make sure my parents can't brainwash her. My older brother is going to stay in touch with all of them which is a good thing as he can act as a link between me and the other siblings if my parents ever forbid them from talking to me. Otherwise, I'm completely done with these people. Good for this original poster for standing up for themselves. It's terrible that he has parents who are super irresponsible and bringing children into this world that they cannot take care of. And worst of all, they wanted the original poster to give over the money they were going to use for college, which is truly just so disgusting and toxic. This original poster literally has a way out of their situation, and these parents want to try and take that away and perpetuate this weird environment of everyone staying poor. So good for this original poster for standing up for themselves and getting away from this. Because they can do a lot better than this and they're going to be so much happier away from their weird entitled parents.
my ex is still trying to talk to me, even though we've been broken up for over four years, and I honestly don't know what to do. So I genuinely want to understand what is going on right now, because the relationship I had with my ex wasn't that serious, and it was only like that because he didn't want it to be serious. So first, a little bit of backstory. We met four years ago and dated off and on for a few months. I met him through my roommates and was very hesitant to get involved with him at first. He came off too strong and didn't seem like a stable or healthy person to date. On the fourth day of knowing him, he got us into a car accident because he decided to race his friend. Thankfully, none of us were hurt, but it showed me how immature and impulsive he really was. He apologized profusely and I let it go, but his father kicked him out of the house because it was his car in the first place that he wrecked. So he moved in with me as well as my roommates. This was all temporary, which I was really uncomfortable with, but couldn't really say anything otherwise. Another red flag was when he opened up to me about his ex-girlfriend. She apparently cheated on him. He was crying about it and seemed pretty angry. I could obviously tell that he was not over her yet and told him the hard truth that I did not think he was ready to still be dating. He was stubborn and kept trying to charm me. It worked and soon I started to catch feelings for him. And that's when he started ghosting me. Not much to be said there. He just stopped reaching out and when I would ask him if he's lost interest, he would tell me no and that he was just going through stuff. He would only show up once in a while to spend some quality time together and then disappear. I soon caught on and stopped trying, but it was really heartbreaking overall. I saw him one time about a month later and he didn't even say hi. Then another month passes by and he only shows up at my house and starts flirting and getting touchy as if nothing had happened. He didn't give me an explanation and showed zero remorse, but I was still not over him and wanted closure badly, so I still let him in. He didn't put any effort in, we didn't go on dates, and our conversations were incredibly dull. He wasn't interested in getting to know me, and he was very vengeful, and told me that he wanted to work hard and become rich. Also, his ex can regret cheating on him. That was literally his main goal in life. He showed up at my house once or twice a week. He would bring drinks, and then he would get wasted. We would spend more quality time together, if you know what I mean. And then he would spend the night and leave early in the morning. At that point, I started to lose interest pretty quickly. I wanted to have a conversation and end things properly, but he said something along the lines of, Oh, not this again. I'm not going to change. This is all I can offer. I told him to do what he wants to do and that I was going to do the same. I can happily say that I have not seen him since. I basically ghosted him and I had zero regrets because he did it first. He treated me like garbage and wouldn't even give me a chance to talk things out. He kept messaging me for months on end, but I ignored him. Eventually, I started to feel bad, especially after he blew up on one of my roommates about how they avoid me and how I'm doing the same. For the record, their decision to cut ties with him has nothing to do with me. But for old time's sake, I reached out and we had a talk and I explained everything to him. I thought that I would at least give him closure, even if he denied me that the first time. And I made it clear I was not interested in rekindling things and he said he respected that. At least that's what he said. Because over the years, he kept trying to talk to me. Yesterday, for example, he texted me saying he misses me and asked if we could talk from time to time. Honestly, I have no hard feelings, but I don't really want to be friends with this guy. We were never friends and we're just different people, so I don't understand why he still tries to talk to me. I'm not saying any of this to be bitter. I'm just really confused and I just don't get it. Has anyone ever gone through something similar? I'm really curious to hear other people's input because this whole thing is really confusing. What should I do? This guy sounds really clingy. It seems like what he had going on with you was this like on and off relationship where he could basically do whatever he wants. He could disappear for months on end, then come back and spend quality time with you. And from the looks of it, no other woman wants anything to do with him. And he's being kicked to the curb and he has literally nobody. So he's going back to the one person who gave him the time of day. And I'm honestly surprised after everything you described that you even went back to him just to give him closure. I don't think he deserves it because I think he was a terrible boyfriend if you even want to call him that. If anything, he's just incredibly desperate and very possessive. And I think it's time to cut ties with him completely. This is not a healthy thing for you or any kind of future relationship and it's not something you want to entertain because his actions truly have consequences and one of those consequences in my opinion is getting cut off by someone he mistreated. An entitled Karen tries to disrupt service by turning off our Uber application at the restaurant I'm working at. So I get this table and immediately I knew I would not like them. They appear to be in their mid 20s and both just seemed extremely snobbish. The girl doesn't take off her sunglasses at all. They seat themselves without speaking to me first and she tries 
tries to put her purse on another table next to them. They park their extremely expensive chrome car directly in front of the restaurant on the street, and after being told that they can't park there, they just said, it's fine. I didn't care if their car got towed, so I just dropped the conversation. I begin to ask them if they would like to start off with sparkling water or tap water, and this entitled Karen just cuts me off and immediately says in an irritated tone, bottled flat water. I start them off with that, and maybe five minutes later, they are ready to order. I ask her what she would like, and she just responds the whole time like she's repeating herself for the tenth time, even though I only had her give me her order once. I step into the bathroom for maybe half a minute, because you know, I needed to, and I hear the Uber tablet going off with a new order. I wash my hands and step out to see this entitled Karen standing in front of the tablet, obviously trying to do something on it. I should also mention I was the only one on the floor. It was a morning shift, so obviously it was a nightmare. I go over to her and ask what she's doing. She immediately says, can you turn off your Uber? It's making a noise and I don't like it. I immediately respond with, ma'am, please do not touch our equipment. I can turn the volume on the ringer down, but I cannot turn off Uber. She then looks at me like I just threw snot at her. It's making an annoying noise. I was really tempted to say, so are you, but you don't see me complaining. But instead, I just said, I understand, but this is a part of our business. As I just mentioned, I can turn the volume down if you find it so disruptive. She gives a long, drawn-out sigh and just says, whatever, then just walks back to her table. She continued to be an entitled Karen her entire meal and then thankfully left. The only silver lining here is the fact that her boyfriend even tipped us at all because honestly, I wasn't expecting much. I gotta be honest, I was really hoping her car would get towed because if someone acts that entitled, sometimes karma just needs to come back and teach them a lesson. But I have to say it, this entitled Karen was very brave. To go up to somebody else's equipment, let alone at a place of business and to start fiddling with it, all because you don't like the noises coming out of it, is very brave. She could have absolutely deleted something, she could have damaged the equipment somehow, but best of all, she could have been kicked out permanently for destroying company property, which honestly, I kind of wish would happen. I can't stand it when people act like this, where they think they're so entitled to just about everything around them, especially since this lady sounds like she's one of those people that no matter what you do or how hard you try to please them, they are always going to be offended over something. My girlfriend concealed the identity of someone she had spent some quality time with and saw them regularly while we were on vacation. I've been dating my girlfriend for a little over a year. For me, I'm in my early 30s and my girlfriend's in her upper 20s. This past winter, we went on a long road trip around the US, with our longest stay being two months in one location. We both are very into outdoor recreation and that's why we stayed at this destination for so long. We both have several friends who live in the area and saw them throughout the stay, sometimes together and sometimes separate. It's worth mentioning that we have an extremely trustworthy relationship, very little feelings of jealousy, and absolutely no attempting to control who the other person chooses to spend time with. We both have male and female friends, and that's never been an issue. We have also had multiple partners in the past, well before meeting each other, and have talked on several occasions about past partners and hookups. This has never been a point of conflict. While we were on this trip, she spent a lot of time with one particular friend. They saw each other often and met up to hang out outdoors, which is very normal for us. I met him once or twice for a few minutes as we ran into each other outdoors, which again is very normal. She went to his house once. I was invited, but I ended up declining as I wasn't really feeling it that day. They seemed to text each other often and I never thought anything of it. I remember seeing his name pop up on her phone frequently while we were around the house. Two months passed and we moved into our permanent residence together. It's about seven hours away from where we spent that two month trip. She had some close friends that were going to be in the area that we had just left and was sad about missing them. So she decided to go back for a week even though we had just spent two months there. I was invited again but I declined as I was excited to get settled in our new home together. Several months passed and somehow the topic of conversation ended up on past intimate partners if you know what I mean. She had shared with me before that there was a much older man, probably double her age, that she had spent some time with many years before we met. She always explained it to me as being fun but somewhat an awkward experience. I asked her if she had seen him since and she stated that she had seen him a few times since then. I was curious and asked where she would run into him because she had said that he lived in an area that she had not been back to since she spent some time with him. But after I asked this question, she changed the subject and tried to avoid the question. And I don't think I can truly express how extremely out of character this was for her. I asked her again and she said that she had 
had seen him in passing at the place where we spent two months. I asked who it was and if I had met him. She said that we ran into him once in a parking lot on a trailhead. I was then racking my brain, trying to remember meeting an older gentleman that I just couldn't remember. She attempted to move the conversation in another direction, but the only older guy I could remember meeting was the friend she had spent a lot of time with, but I did not meet him in this parking lot, and I also met him more than once. I said something along the lines of, I remember meeting such and such, but that's not him, after calling him by name. But then she said, no, you're wrong, that was him. I immediately felt deceived and hurt. We really are not the jealous type, but it was obvious that she had hid this from me on purpose, that this is someone that she had spent some quality time with, and for whatever reason, didn't want me to know about it. She had attempted to make me think it was someone else than her friend, who she was certain I knew. If I had not named this person, I truly don't believe she would have revealed their identity. She had always named other previous partners, and I was aware of who they were, but this person was kept a secret. My gears began turning, and I then get really curious if she had kept me in the dark because she had other motives like trying to cheat on me. Because of this, we had several long conversations over the next couple of days. Some trust was broken, and I was having a hard time believing she was telling me the whole truth. I mentioned how she had talked to him nonstop our entire trip, to which she replied that they barely talked, and that it was mostly about outdoor recreation and plans around that. She continues to tell me she has nothing to hide, and offers me to read through her text messages, which is something we have never done before. After scrolling through her messages, it turns out that they were texting pretty much every single day of our two-month trip. The messages are mostly surface level, and there is no hint of anything deeper going on. But as I scroll towards the end of the two-month timeline, she hints at the interaction being nothing, and asks if we can be done with me looking through her phone. I said I would like to keep reading, to which she allowed me to do, thankfully. I then see that while she had been gone for that week without me to visit a close friend, they had met up, and she went to his house. I read her saying that she could stop by a little bit later in the day and try and meet up. When I asked her about this, she replied questioning if she really did go to his house, almost as if she doesn't remember. I'm certain that she never told me about going over there, so I asked several times, and she continues to state that she doesn't remember going to his house during that week, but she implies that she must have gone there at some point. I asked what they did while she was there, and she states she doesn't remember. She swears to me that while she doesn't remember exact details, she is certain that nothing happened and she didn't do anything inappropriate. Everything I know about her says that she would never cheat or lie or do anything like this. She's generally pretty easy to read and she wears her heart on her sleeve. But I feel so distraught about this situation because I want to believe her and part of me does believe her. But it seems like a big red flag that she concealed his identity and continues to try and hide pieces of the story from me. It feels extremely shady the way I was kept in the dark. Perhaps nothing happened, but I am sure that I will never be able to truly know for certain. My only real choices are to believe her and move on or choose to end the relationship. I love this girl with all of my heart, and prior to this, I was so certain that this would be the person that I would be spending the rest of my life with. I don't want to end the relationship, but I am having a really hard time accepting this reality. It makes my mind wander to what other things have been concealed from me, as well as if she is even a trustworthy person as I once thought. How can we move forward from this and still have a healthy, trusting relationship? Am I overanalyzing the situation? Are these red flags as intense as I think they are? She is very willing to do anything to make me feel safe, loved, and comfortable moving forward. What should I do? I gotta be honest, her behavior is super suspicious. She intentionally hid from you that she was meeting up with someone that she had spent some intimate time together, if you know what I mean. And I just don't think that's a good look. And it also is not a good look that her only defense to that was saying, oh, I just don't remember what happened. That's a pretty convenient amount of amnesia that just kind of happened out of nowhere. It just doesn't feel right to me. I think if anything, if you do decide to stick in this relationship, it's time to set some serious boundaries. Obviously, up until this point, you thought you could trust her and you feel like, hey, nothing could go wrong with our relationship. But from the sounds of it, this situation really does seem like it's thrown you for a loop. So I think some healthy communication and talking to each other, as well as being more transparent, could probably absolve you of all your fears. Another option to consider is possibly even talking to that former friend of hers who she visited over and over again for like a week. You could try opening up that can of worms, but I don't know how your girlfriend would react and I'm not sure if that would cause some problems. But either way, the way she acted is completely inappropriate and I don't blame you for being upset because this is sketchy behavior
behavior, and you deserve a lot better from your significant other. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.